Good morning, welcome back to Talk Sport. In this week's video, we're doing a little bit of work on the wiring. So, I've got a few bits I want to do. I've got a fuse box that I have uh, re-terminated to work the way I want it to. I've got a fancy ignition control box that I'm going to be wiring up again to work the way that I want it to. And I'm um, also going to be making up some of the main battery cables so it can get the power distributed around the car. So I bought this keyless entry and push start system a while ago and uh, I've never actually really looked at it that closely. But decided today I'm going to try and work out how this works so that uh, potentially I can use it in the Prefect. Chinglish instructions. Start stop button. Receiver ring. The immobiliser chips and the control box and a whole host of wiring. So what I'm going to do is get this all plugged up together and uh, see if I can work out how it works. Okay so I think I've kind of got this thing worked out and um, it doesn't work quite how as I was expecting but um, just show you. Okay so um, this LED is going to represent the start motor, this one represents the ignition coming on. That's the switch. You can see the starter doesn't run very long, um, and I press it again, and it turns the whole thing off. Now there is an option where you hold down the button, and when you let go, it stops starting, and you press it again to turn off. So maybe I'll use it like that. It's not quite what I wanted. So what I thought from reading the instructions before was that the wire was meant to go to the brake pedal. Um, was going to be the signal to um, when you let off the brakes stop the starter um, obviously that's not what happens um, it just you know, runs the starter for an amount of time it thinks is okay which is not okay for most things um, and then I was going to do something clever with the ECU to make that work but it uh, doesn't look like that is going to be an option I might still use it because I like the button and I can make it work but we'll see I've also just worked out how the alarm slash immobiliser on it works and that's quite a nice little feature actually so I probably will use this. So roughly marked out where things are going to live. Um, as before the battery cutoff is going to live in that area. Um, this is a new idea for the centre console stuff which um, if they come back to me I'll be getting made by Whizbang Fabrication. So the idea is that fuse box, probably ECU, um, and the ECU fuse boxes are all going to live under here, and then the control box tucked away up there, and so then also got the sensor that needs to live somewhere for the immobiliser. Um, got the start stop switch just chucked up there out of the way for now because it's going to probably live up in the roof panel. So that's going to need uh, extending. So I've got roughly kind of where stuff's going to live. These are my main 12 volts for um, fuse box and ECU fuse box. So they're really long. Um, so I think now what I'm going to do is make the battery positive. It goes from here round to actually the switch, which is going to be up there. And that involves then at this end actually connecting this red cable to it and also making the little flying lead as well. So uh, do that now. Uh, this is the uh, main battery cable I'm using. It's big, chunky, 170 amp stuff. Um, if you haven't seen the video I did previously, a couple of years ago now, on how to make battery cables, I'll put a link up here. So I'm not gonna cover that in any detail in this video because there's a video over there that you can watch. Oh, and I'm using a proper FIA spec uh, cutoff switch which has these extra four terminals in the middle. Again, got a really good video on how these work and how to wire them up over here. So make sure to give that a watch as well. Uh, first connected done, that's the battery end. And then I need to just put the whole lot in the car and work out how long it needs to be. And that's the second end. Uh, so yeah, that's the first cable. Uh, roughly, even the right shape and everything. Okay then, so everything is uh, wired into the car and uh, roughly in place. So I'll just talk you through the setup. Battery, the ground just coming off, going over there for now. My battery positive, that runs around to the FIA switch. Comes out the other side, disappears up under the dash to the bulkhead terminal. 
Also on there then is the little fly lead that goes to the terminal that dumps the alternator power when you cut off. And also from there on the switch side is the main power into the fuse board. This yellow lead coming off, flying off, that's um, a trigger switch, trigger wire for the um, ECU main relay. You've got the ECU main power that comes off there as well. And obviously then you've got the control box up under there for the ignition setup. So, just show you how that's going to work. Engine bay is looking a bit of a state at the moment, as I've got some stuff just disconnected and moved out of the way. But the uh, important bit is over here. And you've got the bulkhead connector with the two big positives coming off. The bottom one just drops down here next to the alternator bracket and that's going to bolt onto the back of the alternator. Now the top one sneaks under here past the coil pack which I've got a sort of half mounted <laughs> along there and then down into the depths there onto the start motor. kind of wish I'd gone for the flexible 170 amp stuff it would have just made life easier but um, I am really happy with how that all has all come out it's really neat and so now I just need to start putting more stuff back in turn the power on once the power's on you can disable the alarm and then press once for ignition on press again the engine will start press a third time whole thing turns off. If you want to leave the battery on, you can re-enable the alarm or just turn off the power. I think that's pretty uh, going to be pretty funky. I can only take so much wiring in one day and so I think that's probably enough of that for today. Um, it's also just gone quarter past one so I make that time for lunch. So it's done a little bit more wiring. I've now got the alternator and the starter both fully wired up. Uh, just very quickly show you. Decided I'm going to have two areas of the bulkhead where the wiring passes through. Uh, first one is going to be here, and the second one over here where the bulkhead connector is. So, for both of those areas, I've got two of these bulkhead connectors. Those of you who watch Project Binky might recognize because uh, I bought them from Battle Possession Motorsport after seeing them in a Binky episode. These are them, they will bulkhead mount, split into two like that. So this piece, that piece goes in the bulkhead, something like that. That then comes along, clips in, and jobs are good on. For now though, I'm not putting these in. I'm gonna come back and wire these in later. Why? Because if I wire these in first time round, I'm never gonna get the wiring done. So I'm gonna run all the wires and then come back and when I've got some patience, do each of these connectors. So of course, you know, we've got to demonstrate it all working now. So the power's turned on. I've got my warning lights here. Okay. Disable the alarm. First click and the ignition light comes on. And then if I click again and provide the correct signal, then you had the starter just fire. So I'm not going to go into how that works, but I'm going to assure you that it does. Um, I will tell you there's an ECU signal involved to make the whole thing work and you can work out the rest from there. But then third push at the button, obviously the engine didn't start, but if it was this would be running, but third press and it's all turned off. So I'm really pleased that's come out just how I wanted it to and uh, now I've just got to wire up everything else. So I've got the wiring split into uh, this yellow wire which we mentioned already, that's the uh, signal wire for the power to the ECU. My permanent live and then over here on the other side got my bundle of switch lives so now i've worked out where the dash and stuff is going to go um, i can start making a bit more progress on the wiring today it's very much been an exercise of working out where everything's going to live in order to be able to start you know, making some wiring that's at least somewhere near the right length that beep was the alarm, self-arming. Also tells me I didn't turn off the battery. So I've ended up doing a hell of a lot more wiring in this video than I expected to. Um, I was just going to make up the battery cables, but once I got that far, I might as well carry on and start working out where stuff's going to live and making sure stuff works properly, which pleased to say it does. Quick release turned up and it's quite nice for 
what it costs. Um, doesn't seem to have any play. I'm going to chuck that in the car now, see what kind of improvement it makes. So I've got the quick release fitted, a couple of little issues with it. The horn button doesn't fit, uh, it's too deep, so probably just going to have to modify that just to fill that centre section back out. And also with the ring gear on for the uh, horn button to fit, the bolts aren't long enough. So for now what I'm going to do is just take that ring gear off um, so the bolts are long enough and see how that all looks. Okay, so obviously I haven't put all the bolts in, but uh, yeah, that fits better. Those bolts for anything are actually now a little long. Um, this did come with some shorter ones, but I just want to try this. I don't think this wheel is going to work. I think I'm going to need uh, to go deep dish. That's definitely helped move the wheel out a bit, but it is still quite a stretch. And like before, I can actually reach the wheel now, but you can see my arm is you know, it's fully outstretched. So that's not ideal, but a deep dish will sort that out. So yeah, um, that's helped. That's definitely better. And um, yeah, hangs up on that hook nicely from where I'm sat, so that's awesome. So a deep dish well then is, I think, definitely needed. And uh, also I kind of could do some buttons on there because um, I think I'm going to need to put the indicators on there. Uh, yeah, you'd get as I thought, but quick release is good. Can't believe how sunny it looks out there. It's not, not that bright. Apparently it's just that dark in here. Hey, anyway, um, steering wheel slightly better than it was. So I'm just out here on my lunch break uh, doing some mocking up of parts. So I've just tried the bonnet back on with those parts in the engine bay and I'm a little bit gobsmacked that the bonnet fits. So um, I'm going to show you this process in reverse. You can probably just about see why I'm surprised it fits. So there you have it, that is the new turbo for the uh, Pinto, it's just a little bit bigger than the old one. And so that's the two turbos side by side, the old TDO4 19T hybrid that we made for the kit car versus the new delivered to us by a, a fan is all I'm allowed to say, much bigger TDO5 based turbo. So this whole section over here is going to be removed. Uh, just going to cut the casting along there to remove that and then tidy that up. So it's going to make the body of it a little bit smaller and that will allow us to clock the turbo in the direction we want. But as you've just seen, it all fits under the bonnet. <laughs> A little bit of new turbo action then. So uh, as I sort of alluded to earlier, this turbo is uh, off something a bit uh, different. And so I've got a couple of things that I need to do. One of them is I'm going to be changing this exhaust housing. Uh, the turbo is, we believe, a TDO5 based. It seems to be some kind of TDO5, TDO6 hybrid, but um, yeah, exhaust housing should be replaceable with a, a Subaru TDO5 one, which will make that all easier. Um, Core wise, the oil drain off the uh, TDO4 fits. You've got two coolant lines, one this side, one that side. Uh, I haven't checked the sizes on those yet. Um, and they, it's not oil drain, oil feed there on the top. And the oil feed is actually a larger thread than the one on the TDO4. So I'm going to have to buy a new adapter for that. And so I thought I'd just check the coolant lines and so this is the adapter I use in the TDO4. In here. Yeah. That doesn't fit. So that's where I'm going to end it this week. As always, thank you for watching. If you did enjoy the video, make sure you click the thumbs up icon. And if you want to get notifications on when our next videos come out, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the little bell icon next to it to make sure you get notifications every time a new video is released. Of course, as some of you have probably found me via them, you can follow the Ducksport pages on Facebook, Twitter, Car Throttle, um, Instagram. I think that's it, but if you can think of any more where I should be, let me know. I can hear your laughter coming waves across the shore. Oh, maybe you could fly my kite, babe. Maybe you could fly my kite, babe. I can hear your laughter coming waves across the shore.
across the shore. Oh, maybe you could fly my kite, babe. Maybe you could fly my kite.